I want to start this by quickly apologizing. You guys already know by looking at my channel, I've not been here for about six or seven months. Business has been absolutely crazy, but 2023 is coming to a close and I will be around a lot more moving into 2024 and throughout the entire year, bringing you guys lots of helpful business strategies, Google Ads strategies, Facebook ad strategies, and much more to help you all grow your businesses. Now, today's video is going to be a 90 day case study of one of my businesses, mainly based around Google Ads. I'm going to do a separate case study on Facebook because that deserves its own video, which could honestly honestly be about an hour long but just before we go any further if you are struggling with google ads if you're struggling to see results for your e-commerce business go ahead and check out my google ads agency linked below we're currently taking on brand new clients so if you want us to help scale and grow your business through google definitely go and check that out it will be the top link in the description and this video here is going to be like i said a case study on how i've generated just over two million dollars in sales in the last 90 days granted that's not all google Google Ads will be taking a deeper dive into Google Ads on this video and I will be doing like I said a separate video on Facebook okay now just a few pointers or literally two things that have changed since my last video I have recently upgraded to Shopify plus for a number of reasons one of them being the customizable checkout with Shopify's basic plans you really have no ability to customize the checkout and I was eager to try some new things to try and increase my conversion rate one of them being the Shopify checkout page when I migrated over to Shopify plus at that moment in time is when they made the one page checkout compulsory for me personally i saw a massive drop in conversion rate when one page checkout was implemented and i wanted to go back to the three page checkout and the only way to do that was by upgrading to shopify plus but now typically you can choose between the two regardless of your shopify plan so that is one of the main reasons another reason is to save on credit card fees because i'm doing higher volume now it essentially pays for itself and then saves some money by using shopify plus and having those much lower credit card fees and the other thing is the fact i've had a backup version of my site built on woocommerce and that is because in october particularly I know it's still an issue now is the fake copyright dmca takedown notices that are going around on shopify at the moment so to protect my business i invested a few thousand dollars and built a backup version of my website over on wordpress slash woocommerce it's worth the investment it's worth it to safeguard my business so that's just a little update about what's been going on since i last made a video okay now hopping into my google ads account here let's go ahead and do the last 90 days which i believe if we just do september 14th to december 14th you'll be able to see how much google has contributed to that two million dollars in sales and just quickly actually if we quickly go over to shopify and i'll just show you uh, the last 90 days here just so we've got some overall context you can see these are the figures two million uh, in sales 1.2 percent conversion rate obviously something i'm still heavily testing and working on but last 30 days that has improved slightly anyway let's change that back to the last uh, 90 days and you can see the conversion value from google is just shy of 700k now you'll notice this since last time google used to account for about 75 percent of my revenue facebook being the things like that were the other side but a huge shift in my business has been a massive increase in facebook ad spend especially this q4 it has driven incredible results for me uh, and that's why you're going to see a few more videos regarding facebook on the channel and i will do kind of a part two to this case study where we go and look at my facebook account but for this video google ads 3.33 roas last 90 days very solid results very consistent and you can see the growth here throughout q4 leading into black friday now in terms of the account structure it is quite simple there's no need to really over complicate it i have three performance max campaigns one of them is a single product performance max campaign one has all my products in it, obviously excluding the single one. And the third has my higher ticket products. So they're obviously excluded from the main one as well. I have two standard shopping campaigns, one for Australia, one for Canada. I have a dynamic remarketing campaign. I have a brand search campaign. I have a DSA campaign, which is a dynamic search ad campaign and a normal search campaign which is mainly for my best sellers and you can see we have a pretty consistent ROAS throughout all of these campaigns DSA has never really taken off but you can see it is spending much less than everything else but obviously you can see up here on the cost column that the clear big spenders are the three performance max campaigns so I want to start by jumping in and just quickly talking about the structure of those campaigns so you can almost compare it to what 
your own Google Ads account structures are like. Now for me, these campaigns work best when you just completely leave them alone. Now I haven't touched these campaigns in months now. Honestly, probably the last time I made severe and big changes to my Pmax campaigns was probably about four months ago. And one thing I've noticed over the last 30 days is that a lot more traffic is now coming from the other channels within Pmax, such as display, search. And that's not just traffic, that is conversions as well. It's good quality traffic, and I'll break that down in a minute just to compare and show you. So if we take this campaign here, I'll just quickly highlight it. If we go to the last 30 days very quickly, you'll be able to see Okay, 1,300 conversions in the last 30 days with 3.7 ROAS. Now the way to compare how many conversions are coming from the shopping ad side of things, you can very easily tell by just looking at the product listing tab. So if we click the campaign, if we click products here on the left hand side, you can see these are the number of conversions that have come from shopping ads. So adding these up, we're looking at about 550-ish, which means about 50% of the conversions are coming from shopping and 50% are coming from everywhere else. That's YouTube, Search, Display, Gmail, all the other networks that are obviously a part of a Pmax campaign. Now, a lot of people get caught up trying feed only Pmax campaigns. Yes, they work. It's not something I'm using on this account. I use them in clients' accounts, but this is just a prime example of when you let Google do its thing and don't touch it, it starts to go out, find new customers in other areas. Now, at the start of the year, I'd probably say about 95 or even 100% of my sales on this campaign were from the shopping side of things but now it's only half and there's half coming from elsewhere. So it's a really positive change within the campaign and it's not a change that I've made myself. It's just me that's allowed Google to learn and optimize and it, yeah, it's just a great example of why you should test and don't just rely on feed only. Now, just briefly in terms of the structure of the Pmax campaigns, this applies to all three in this account. I have an ad group or an asset group, should I say, that is feed only. So there's no assets, there's no headlines, there's no you know, audience signals, it's just simply the product feed attached to the asset group. So that is the feed only element, I guess, of this campaign, but it's not a dedicated campaign that's just feed only. Then based on the campaign, if it's my main campaign with all my other products in it, I'll categorize the products and split them into their own asset groups. That way you can have relevant headlines, descriptions, uh, pictures themed around that product collection just makes sense, makes it a bit more targeted. And then in terms of audience signals, I usually test two to three at the moment per product category. Again, I'll use the gym store as an example. If you've got leggings, you'd have leggings in their own asset groups. You'd have two or three asset groups you know, with the same images, it's just duplicate, but the only variable you're gonna be changing is gonna be the audience signal. That way it's easy to split test and see which audience signals are performing better than others. Give it some time to learn, but after a while, you'll be able to turn off the losers and then cycle in new signals to test. Now, in terms of audience signals, there's so many different things you can test. For me, best performers are keyword only audience signals where you build out your own signal five to ten different search terms that are themed around your product they they perform really well for me secondly equally as good as well are in-market audience segments these are kind of like audiences in facebook and if you're struggling with ideas and you've already got an existing pmax campaign a good way to see what audience segments are related to the campaign simply go to your insights tab and scroll down somewhere on here for me you can see it right here i'm going to blur them out you can see the fact that they are all in market segments here share a conversion percentage here and the index here which is essentially how much more likely is a person belonging to you know this top segment for example likely to convert so to simplify people who belong to this first audience segment are 45.2 times more likely to purchase from my brand that's essentially what this column means so if you haven't tested any of these signals yet you look at this and then go and test all of these so you're not going to spend hours thinking and trying to find different segments to test they're literally right in front of you if you're already running a Pmax campaign. If you're wanting to create one from scratch and don't have this data, just test a few that relate to your business. It's really not that difficult to find them. And going back to the keyword audience signals, if you're struggling for keyword ideas to test, again, somewhere in this insights tab, you will have your best performing search terms here and it will tell you roughly what the conversion value they've generated already for you is. So go ahead and test these as well. Basically, it is so important to check the insights tab because it's giving you all the data you need to go and test further. It's literally right in front of you. I know from speaking to potential clients and things like that, 
people don't even know this exists and it is such crucial information it's a waste if you're not looking and you know applying it to the campaign now moving on from this something that i found to be incredibly important and i've mentioned this across many videos but more so recently from my own testing the landing page and your website is just as equally if not more important than how you structure a google campaign for example because getting that person to click your google ad usually in terms of shopping let's say simply relies on the title image and the price that they're seeing on google but when they're trying to make a decision as to whether or not to purchase from your brand that is down to what they're presented with on your website if you've got a slow website and it's not loading properly people are just gonna leave they're not gonna wait if you've got a poor product page and it just looks spammy and rubbish again people are gonna leave there's no trust there so conversion rate optimization on your website is and especially the landing or product page is so important this has been one of my main focuses over the last three months in q4 and i've seen incredible results just by testing slightly different things i'll give you a few ideas just off the bat that i've tested i've switched my variant menus on my product page from drop downs to swatches i've embedded my business's trust pilot rating on the product page so there are real legitimate customer reviews being shown rather than than you know imported aliexpress ones which a lot of people use and customers are now used to them and they probably know they're fake so if you are an established brand and you've got a good rating on trustpilot or any other known you know review site that provides non-biased customer reviews if you are displaying that on your website that immediately builds huge trust with your potential customers and it's something that is going to massively affect your conversion rate in a positive way so don't be going into your google campaigns every single day and changing and tweaking things because that will only reset the learning process over and over again if you want to be testing variables test different things on your website and eventually you'll come to a decision and a landing page style that converts best for your business now quickly going back to these performance max insights i mentioned earlier i've got a search campaign that's doing incredibly well and a way you can build out these search campaigns with already proven search terms is by using the search terms that are in your Pmax Insights. It is honestly as simple as that. It allows you to test terms that Google already knows convert well for your business. So you're eliminating a massive learning phase with your search campaign and you're going straight in with these terms that you know already convert. And I wouldn't test a search campaign with all your products. For example, with my search campaign, there is honestly three to four products in that campaign. And when I say that, I mean, there are only three to four product landing pages we're using. So obviously it's not shopping ads, it's search. So you don't need a search campaign and you don't need, you know, individual ad groups, every single product. Just test three or four of your best sellers and use your PMAX insights to find the best search terms for you to use as the targeting. Now, if you want more detailed videos on, for example, the search campaign and how exactly I go through and create one, then please drop a comment down below and please also let me know what other types of videos you want to see. The next one after this is probably going to be the part two of this case study, which will show you my Facebook results. And this briefly is my Facebook account. And if we do again, December to uh, September, wasn't it? Just to show you sort of how much uh, revenue is tracking over here you can see last 90 days spend is just over half a million pounds with a tracked revenue return of over a million pounds and that is about two ROAS now at this scale that is still incredibly profitable especially when your break even rise is around 1.5 very good CPMs these are all target in USA as well so you can see there's a lot more going on in Facebook. You know, I've got a lot more active campaigns, a lot more is going on that deserves its own video. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. And just to wrap things up, a few more final pieces of information that you might find useful. One, don't be afraid to increase the prices of your products. I've learned this year, especially at the start of Q4, even in November as well, actually, that, you know, I could have 20, 30, $40,000 days but my profit margin on some of those days has been, you know, incredibly low. So what I've done to tackle this, you know, there's things you can do with optimizing your ads, but I've increased the prices of some of my best selling products. And I'm not just talking about going from 55 to $60 selling price. Some products, even my high ticket ones have gone up in price by, you know, 75 to $100. And today at the time of making this video, they're still selling, they're still converting as well. But I now have all that extra room and extra margin to work with. I was getting a bit carried away with the revenue numbers during the last 90 days that one of my main goals for my brand next year is to focus on the profit rather than the revenue. Another thing I've been focusing on as well is increasing customer retention. 
conversion, increasing repeat purchases. And I've done this by outsourcing my email marketing to an agency and we have managed to turn around huge results in the last 30 days. Prior to bringing them on board, email marketing was accounting for about 9% of my revenue in the last 30 days, or should I say the first 30 days of using the agency, that 9% went to about 27%. So a huge increase there. A lot of people sleep on it, but email marketing is incredibly important for building your brand and increasing your margins. And finally, don't think you need to do everything yourself. My business has grown 4X since last year. And one of the major reasons for that is because I've been hiring people, offloading tasks to different people, different members of my team, which frees up my time and allows me to focus on actually growing the business rather than you know managing customer service and things like that. The sooner you can get people to do that for you and free up your time, you will notice a huge difference and your business will grow. So I hope you found this video useful. If you want more detailed videos on certain campaign types within Google, please let me know in the comments down below. But please do keep an eye out for part two of this, which will be the Facebook side of this case study. Like I said at the start, if you are struggling with Google Ads and you wanna work with my agency, AdRaw, go ahead and click the top link in the description. But other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.